In this video, I will demonstrate the capabilities of a Promore Enterprise Edition. When you sign in into a Promore, you get into the Promore's workspace. Uh, in this workspace, you can store uh, process models uh, that you can open and edit if you so wish. And in parallel, you can also store uh, event logs next to these process models. When, uh, once I have uploaded an event log, I can open it using the Process Discover plugin. Uh, the Process Discover plugin shows me by default a process map. In a process map, every uh, node represents an activity and every uh, arc represents a directly follows relations. Arcs are um, annotated by default with the case frequency, that is, in how many cases did this activity occur right before the target activity of the arc. Um, we, uh, we can then change this uh, uh, frequency uh, metric, so maybe we are not interested in seeing in how many cases did a given uh, activity occur, but we want to know uh, what was the total number of times that this activity was executed, counting repetitions. This process map that I'm showing here is not the full picture of this business process. This is a manufacturing process in which there are different types of parts that go through a manufacturing line and depending on the product that we are manufacturing, the, the, the parts are going to take very different pathways. And because of that, this process is quite complex. By default, a Promore or the Process Discover plugin of a Promore shows me an abstracted version of the process map. I can then use the arc slider and the node slider to change uh, the amount of details that I display. If I put it to 100%, I see the full picture of the process, which in the case of real life process like these ones is unfortunately too complex to analyze. Therefore, I have to choose my level of abstraction at which I am going to look at this process. One possibility is to first select the number of nodes or activities in the process that we want to analyze. Let's say that I want to analyze only 50% of the activities. This is still quite complex, but then I will try now to see if I can reduce the percentage of arcs that are being displayed. For example, I can reduce the percentage of arcs to 10% of the arcs. And now I get uh, a more readable process. It's not a complete process, but it's a process that I can understand. And it displays to me the most frequent activities as well as the most frequent connections between these activities. I can also change the perspective that I am using to look into this process. By default, the Process Discover plugin of Apomore shows us the activity perspective. But I can switch that, for example, to the resource perspective. When I switch to the resource perspective, I am not going to see activities as nodes, but I'm going to see resources as nodes. Or, or I could pick the worker ID as the perspective that I'm going to take. In this case, the nodes represent identifiers of workers, which in this case have been previously anonymized. And the arcs represent that one worker, in this case worker number 997, gave work 20 times to worker 4618, meaning that this worker performed an activity and the other worker performed the activity immediately following this in a given case. Um, be it on the activities perspective or on any other perspective, I can change the information that is being overlaid on top of my, the nodes and the arcs of the process map. Um, for example, I might be interested in knowing how much time every activity takes. This is called the duration overlay. And in the duration overlay, the nodes represent, tell me how much time a given activity takes, either on average or cumulatively, or uh, the minimum or the maximum or the median. And the arcs tell me uh, how uh, many uh, transitions, so, so, so how much time it takes between the moment the source activity completes and the moment the target activity of the arc completes. And this represents a waiting time. That means that between the completion of this activity and the start of the next activity, on average, there is a waiting time of 16.92 hours.
be it on the duration overlay or on the frequency overlay, I can switch from a process map view of this process to a BPMN view. So in, in the BPMN view shows me, in addition to the activities, also the gateways, particularly the decision points in the process. For example, here there is a decision point where I can choose between multiple activities and the merging points. And if I look at this, I can start seeing, for example, repetitions. Here I have a rework loop where after reaching a given gateway, I come back to a previous gateway and I repeat a given part of the process. Also at any point in time, being on the process map view or on the BPM view, I can start setting um, filters on the process. Let me first save this process in a BPMN format so that I have a process model of the entire process abstracted to 50% of the nodes and 10% of the arcs. So for that, I click on the Save BPMN model and I give it a, a, a name to this model and I, I, I save it. Now I'm going to try to filter this event log to focus on a subset of that this process that I am seeing here. Let me, for example, um, set uh, among the many different types of filters that are offered, a performance filter. A performance filter allows me to retain or remove the cases whose duration or some other performance measure is less than or equal or greater than or equal a certain uh, threshold. For example, in this case, let me take all the cases that takes uh, less than uh, 30 days to say something. So I apply this filter and now I can see that 76% of cases fulfill that filter. If I click on OK, then uh, my process map has been updated to only show me those cases where uh, the duration of the case is less than uh, uh, 30 days. I can save this as, for example, uh, an event log corresponding to the fast cases. I can then uh, review this filter and define the exact opposite filter, which is that I'm going to remove those cases that takes that less than 30 days, which means I'm going to only retain those cases that takes more than 30 days. Uh, and uh, once I do this, then I can see the 23% of cases that satisfy this condition. And I can save uh, that event log uh, and I can call that event log the event log of the slow cases. I can go back to the performance, um, to the workspace, and I will see my event log with the fast cases, the one with the slow cases, and the production process model. I can take, for example, the two event logs corresponding to the fast cases and the slow cases, and I can analyze them using the performance dashboard plugin of a Promore. The performance dashboard plugin allows me to compare, to analyze one process or to compare two or more uh, event logs of the same or of different processes uh, in terms of a range of performance metrics and the performance dimensions. Um, I can, for example, see uh, what is the number of active cases fast slow cases being the red ones and fast cases being the blue one across the whole time frame covered by this, that event log. I can see the distribution of case durations which naturally shows me that fast cases blue are faster than slow cases. Uh, I have a range of other performance measures, processing times, waiting times per case, uh, etc. I can also view the dimension per activity, uh, which allows me, for example, to see that in the slow cases, a, a certain activity, in this case, final inspection, is more frequent in relative terms than uh, a, it is in the fast cases. We can also see the performance per resource, or a, I can select any other attribute I wish. Finally, I can analyze the performance of the process also using the animation dashboard of a Promore. For that, I take the process model of this process that I previously exported, the event log of the fast cases and the event log of the, of the slow cases, and I try to animate this event log. And uh, uh, the animation is going to display me the process model that I previously derived, and it's going to display me uh, when I click on the play button how the different cases circulate through the various elements of these process models over time. And by observing this visualization, 
uh, this dynamic visualization, I can see, uh, for example, that uh, certain activities like this one are more frequent for fast cases than there are for slow cases. I can also see where bottlenecks are being built up in the process and uh, eventually I can see if there are any uh, uh, cases that are taking some back loops. And this concludes the uh, quick overview of Apromore 